Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Course Studio. Welcome to the show. So on today's episode, I've got a different kind of episode for you where I'm going to talk about what very well might be the most brutal combo of all time. And that is quite the title with all the combos that are out there in Magic. And yeah, this one definitely, definitely takes the cake in a lot of scenarios. So buckle up and get ready for sheer brutality. So this combo revolves around the very strange card, Lethal Vapors. It's an enchantment for two black black and it says, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, destroy it. So obviously that's an incredibly brutal effect. I mean, essentially, unless the creature is basically what indestructible, it's probably gonna get taken out. Now again, this card is incredibly brutal. So there's kind of like a safety valve on it where any player can pay zero to destroy it, but then they skip their next turn and any player can activate this ability. So if a player is in desperate need and doesn't have another form of target removal to actually get rid of this, they very well might be willing to actually skip their next turn. That being said, when this card was designed, I highly doubt they had anything in mind like this combo that came out of it. Because the first piece of this combo is not the fact that, you know, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you destroy it. It's that we can actually activate this ability. Again, we can pay zero to destroy it and skip our next turn. And actually, we can do that as many times as we want. In response to actually destroying it, we can then say, okay, I pay zero again, I skip my next turn, and then I keep building up this over and over again. I can keep paying zero over and over again to skip as many turns as I want. Now, typically, skipping your next turn is an incredibly bad thing. It's very detrimental to your game plan, generally. But again, with this one, we're planning on skipping, you know, 100,000, 200,000, whatever it is, turns. Which, you know, if you're thinking logically, okay, skipping one turn is bad, how in the world is skipping that many turns actually a good thing? Wouldn't just that be the worst play of all time? Well, of course, to explain that, we've got to get to our other pieces of this combo. Because the next part of this combo, and a card that made this all possible, is to Fairy's Protection. It's an instant for two and a white, and it says, until your next turn, your life total can't change, and you have protection from everything, all permanents you control phase out. Exile to Fairy's Protection. Basically, in magic terms, you're not there. You're, I mean, you're still sitting there, but you're not there. So essentially, until your next turn, nothing can happen to you or your things. So this is the second part of the combo. Again, essentially, it's, okay, I'm gonna skip my next 100,000 turns, by the way, uh, nothing's gonna happen to me in between now and then. Now, of course, if your opponents kind of know what's going on with this combo, they can actually respond and actually start activating your lethal vapors as well to skip turns too. So for this combo to actually work, you have to make it so that your opponents can't actually activate lethal vapors because you wanna be the only player that's actually skipping turns. So we can actually do that in multiple ways, and the very first card that I'm going to bring up is Grand Abolisher. It says, during your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. So with this in play, you get down Lethal Vapors, and your opponents can't activate it. Only you can activate it. This is also incredibly fantastic with this combo, because your opponents also can't counter Teferi's Protection. So yeah, this little two-mana Human Cleric is doing a lot of work for you. Of course, with this version of the three card combo, it looks like this. Again, let's say that you've already got your Grand Abolisher out, you cast your Lethal Vapors, and you activate it as many times as you want. So again, let's say that you activated it 100,000 times to skip your next 100,000 turns. Then you cast a Fairy's Protection, and you peace out until your next turn, which again is not for a very, very, very long while. 
Your life total can't change. You've got protection from everything. Your permanents are phased out. So they're basically gone. And yeah, now um, it's not going to be your turn for quite some time. In fact, it's not going to be your turn for so long that unless your opponents have a way to prevent themselves from milling or another way to win, and we'll get to those here in a bit, um, you just win because, well, you're not going to have your next turn until they're actually already gone. Again, your opponents basically can't do anything to you. Your life total can't change. You got protection from everything. And you won't be drawing out your deck, but your opponents will be. They're going to keep taking all their turns without you, drawing more and more cards into their deck. And even if they don't cast any draw spells, if they don't have a way to prevent themselves from milling, well, that is game over. So essentially, you're just sitting at the table and watching everything go. And your opponents, unless they've got a solution for this, this lose. There is nothing they can do about it. So yeah, even just calling this combo brutal might be an understatement because you essentially are winning by doing nothing. Again, there are plenty of decks out there that can win with, you know, an extra turns combo where they take an infinite amount of turns. But I think, you know, this might be one of the only ways, if not the only way, to win through taking no turns. And speaking of ways to win with this combo, though, that Grand Abolisher card again, as I mentioned before, can actually be replaced with other cards in this three card combo. For example, City of Solitude is an enchantment for Tuna Green. It's an old card which reads, players can cast spells and activate abilities only during their own turns. So again, kind of like a Grand Abolisher, but it applies to everyone, even you. But again, the main thing that matters is that your opponents can't activate Lethal Vapors on your turn. Another way to stop them in a similar way is with Tithe Taker, which says, during your turn, spells your opponents cast cost one more to cast and abilities your opponents activate cost one more to activate unless they're mana abilities. So your opponents can still activate Lethal Vapors, but they have to pay one mana essentially every single time they do it instead of it being free. So obviously because of that, you know, except in the rare occasion where they can generate infinite mana on the spot, uh, well, they cannot activate nearly as many times as you can. I mean, even if they have access to a very impressive amount of mana, like 20 mana, good for them. They can skip 20 turns. You can skip 20,000 turns if you want to. So obviously then because of that, they are going to draw themselves out and lose still. And then another way to do this is actually with certain split second cards like Frozen Grip, Wipe Away, and Trick Bind. Now with these, I will specify that you have to go about it in a particular way. You need to cast Lethal Vapors, hold priority, activate it all of your times that you want to activate it while holding priority, then cast one of these while also holding priority. And please correct me below in the comments if I am wrong on this, Magic Judges, because I am sure I said something incorrect, but basically this is the gist of it. Regardless, Crows and Grip is an instant for two and a green, and it has split second. So as long as it's on the stack, players can't cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. And of course, Crows and Grip is gonna destroy target artifact or enchantment. So essentially, you are getting Lethal Vapors out and activating it as many times as you want, and before your opponents can actually activate it when they want to, you can cast Crows and Grip, and now no one can do anything as long as it's on the stack. It's going to resolve, and it's going to destroy your Lethal Vapors. So before your opponents can actually activate Lethal Vapors, it is gone, but you've already activated all the times you need to activate it. Essentially, this works in the exact same way with Wipe Away, which says return target permanent to its owner's hand. So again, instead of actually destroying Lethal Vapors, you are bouncing it back to your hand, but it has the exact same effect. It came down, you skipped a ton of turns with it, and then you just wiped it away. And then Trick Bind is another split second card that works in a somewhat different way. It says counter target activator triggered ability. If a permanent's ability is countered this way, activated abilities of that permanent can't be played this turn. So you essentially counter one of those activations and then it basically shuts Lethal Vapors down the entire turn so no one can actually activate it again. So it did its job letting you skip turns while not allowing your opponents to do so. And of course, after casting these, keep in mind that you need to cast a Fairy's Protection as well to finish out the combo. That being said, as brutal as this combo is, it is obviously not perfect, and there are still ways for you to lose while you're essentially not playing and skipping all your turns. For example, if your opponents actually want to be milled out, you know, if they've got cards like Thassa's Oracle, Jace Wilder Mysteries, and Laboratory Maniac, they can win in that way. Thassa's Oracle has, when it enters the battlefield, look at the top X card of your library or X your devotion to blue, put up to one of them on top of your library and the rest of them bottom of your library in a random order. If X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. And then Jace Builder Mysteries and Laboratory Maniac essentially say the exact same thing. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. So instead of actually losing the game by getting milled out or, you know, drawing your entire library, you win the game instead. Which, of course, even if you are skipping all of your turns, would then make you lose the game. Yeah, Teferi's Protection can't protect you from that. Of course, there are other alternative win conditions out there, again, with things like Feldar Sovereign, Revel and Riches, and Maze's End. 
Feldar Sovereign is a life gain win condition, which has at the beginning of your upkeep, if you've got 40 or more life, you win the game. Revel and Riches is a treasure condition that says at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 10 or more treasures, you win the game. And then Mace's End is a gate condition, let's just say, to win the game. By paying three and tapping it, you bounce it back to its owner's hand, search your library for a gate card, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. If you control 10 or more gates of different names, you win the game. So obviously, if even just one of your opponents has an alternative win condition in their deck and they're the only opponent left, it's going to be very easy for them to set up their win because you're not there to stop them since you're skipping all your turns. And you know all of your permanents are phased out. So even something as simple as Approach the Second Sun can just win you the game essentially on its own in this scenario. Basically, if you cast it twice, which if you cast it the first time, it goes into your library seven from the top and you gain seven life, but then when you cast it again, you just win the game. So, obviously, even after you've gotten this combo off, although it is incredibly brutal, it can be pretty funny if someone just happens to have this card in their deck and uh, unencumbered, you know, from you not being stopped by you can just win the game. So it is a high-risk, high-reward, brutal play. Also, a very strange and kind of awkward scenario can happen as well with something like Platinum Angel or Abundance. Platinum Angel is a 4-4 flying angel that costs 7, but the important part here is that it says you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. So again, because that player cannot lose the game, let's say again there is one player left, they've got a Platinum Angel in play, their library is gone, they've essentially played all the cards that they want to play, you know, they've got a giant army of creatures, they've got every single one of their lands in play, etc, etc, etc. Even though, you know, technically, if they were to try to draw a card, which they have to, you know, during their draw step, they don't lose the game, even though they essentially are milled out. Now this again leads to a very funny scenario, where they essentially again, assuming that they're the last opponent around, are the only player actually playing the game for the next, whatever, 100,000 turns or however many you said, and now they're just sitting there essentially setting up their board in the exact way that they want to and having the right cards in their hand that they want to until you come back. So obviously, fast forwarding quite some time from there when you actually come back, they're probably going to wreak unholy vengeance upon you. In a similar way, Abundance can actually save that player as well. It's an enchantment for two green green and says if you would draw a card, you may instead choose land or non land or real cards to the top of your library until you reveal a card of the chosen kind. Put that card in your hand and put all their cards revealed this way in the bottom of your library in any order. Basically, this replaces your draw, so instead of saying, oh no, I draw a card and lose the game, you're like, okay, I would draw a card, but instead I'm gonna reveal either, you know, until I get a land or non land, and even if you've got no cards in your library, that doesn't matter. You replaced your draw with another effect, and therefore you didn't draw a card to lose the game. So again, that can lead to the very comical scenario where one player is just playing on their own for 100,000 turns, and they wait to wreak unholy vengeance on the player who pulled off the obnoxious combo. And speaking of similar cards, there's actually some commanders out there that this combo really doesn't actually even work against. So how about commanders like Ormos, or Tygum, or Tomorrow? Which is a very funny name for a commander, but anyways, tomorrow. Ormos says, if you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, instead put five plus one counters on Ormos Archive Keeper. So again, instead of losing by, you know, not having any cards in your library and drawing, you just keep making Ormos bigger and bigger and bigger. So yeah, if your opponent had skipped, you know, 100,000 turns or so, Ormos is going to be, what, like a 500,000 power creature? So... Have fun getting smacked by that when you get back. Next up, Tygum's first line even just stops this combo. It says, skip your draw step. So, cool, you just skip your draw step and you never draw that card that would lose you the game. In a similar way, Tomorrow says, if you would draw a card, look at the top three cards of your library instead. Put one of those cards in your hand, the rest of them in your library in any order. So again, this replaces your draw with, you know, a look at the top three, you get one of them. So technically you're not drawing and therefore you're not drawing out and losing. So if you are trying to pull off this combo, you're going to have a very difficult time, if not an impossible time against any of these commanders. Speaking of which, I'm just going to highlight two newer ones really quick that work in a similar way as Modi's the Archfiend and Aerith Tormented Prophet. Asmodeus says if you would draw a card, exile the top card of your library face down instead. So again, this replaces your draw, so you don't actually draw the card, and therefore you don't lose. In a similar way, Aerothrome into Profit says if you draw a card, exile the top two cards of your library instead, you may play those cards this turn. By replacing the draw, you don't draw out, and you don't lose. So yeah, overall, this is a very interesting, unique, and brutal combo, but it's one that can be stopped, obviously, in a couple of ways, and it can even be stopped after it even goes off. So if you're utilizing this combo, you might think that you've actually won, but if an opponent ends up having an alternative win condition or a way to not draw out of their library, well, 
you might not be so lucky and you might just lose. That being said, it most definitely has to be one of the most unique combos of all time in Magic. And of course, like all their combos, there are certain playgroups out there that are not okay with playing with combos. So if your playgroup's not okay with playing with combos, well, don't play this. But if they are okay with it, great! Have fun skipping all of your turns and just really hope that your opponents don't have something like an approach to the second sun. Regardless, like I like to remind everyone with these types of things, Commander is a social format, so please just talk. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.